All right, everyone, welcome to a, another week and another, not another week, another <coughs> episode of We're definitely not Battle wearing of the, same clothes. the Games here at Board and Scale. We are definitely not recording all of these in one night. This is definitely not the third one in a row that we have recorded. We are doing these very professionally, one by one, in a very timely manner that makes sense and is efficient. Anyways, welcome, and if you are still here after that long rant, we can't wait to tell you about how we feel about these games. And today we have Ono eighteen hundred, which is Kenzie's number three. Three. Welcome, <laughs> welcome everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast, <laughs> Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. At the penguins, the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. You know I don't play right. right, 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 right. In Ono eighteen hundred. You and each of your competitors are businessmen trying to build your empire on your own island. Or women. And, huh? Oh, sorry. Business women or men. <laughs> businessmen and women. Business people. Yes. Very important. We are all inclusive here. Um, as you can see, we have one of them here. Very cool. <laughs> okay. If you're a girl, like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> For more top-notch equality... Like that. Okay. I'm going to stop digging a hole and continue explaining the game. <laughs> in Ono 1800, you are a businessman or woman trying to build your empire and do that better than the other people in the game. So you have an island. You have a starting set of resources that you can produce. You have a starting amount of workers that you, that will, that you can send to work for you to produce said resources. And... The, oh, uh, I don't know the word. One of the most important things in the game, and it's how the game ends, is being able to send your workers down to create resources so that you can play cards out of your hand that will give you more bonuses, points, different things that you can spend to get more or play more cards, get more resources, and so on. And every card that you are able to play is going to give you points at the end of the, at the end of the game, and that's. A large that's going to be a large amount of your points. There are some in game objectives too, but doesn't matter. The base of the game is on your turn, generating resources so that you can play a card from your hand or so that you can build a new, not a new resource from the main board. So you can industrialize a bigger thing. Yes. Right. So you're you're using your base resources to create something bigger. Um, and then you're using those resources that you created to make something bigger to then be able to get the cards out of your hand. Yeah, and that's really all it is. Bigger. The d the thing with this game is that the trading mechanic is such that there is a limited amount of each of the resources. So there's only two tiles for each resource. In a four-player game, guaranteed two people are going to miss out on owning those resources and being able to produce them themselves. So a big part of the game here is a trading mechanism in which you spend your trade tokens to trade with another player and utilize a resource that they have on their board. This lets you not use workers of your own, and it lets them gain gold off of your trade. Workers are another big component of this game where to use specific resources, you have to have the right types of workers. So there's baby workers, and then there's like all the way up until the... like. The teal workers, which are the child high workers. Labor. Yep, child laborers. Um, so to use specific resources, you have to have the right types of workers. So if another player has created that resource, you can, if you don't have that type of worker, you can use their resource by trading instead to then be able to use that. So it's kind of a way around having to use your own workers if you don't have any, which yeah. I think is a cool mechanism. Yeah. And at the end of the game, players are going to score from cards that they were able to play from the objectives that they reached and how well they reached them. And then some other things here and there, like the explore cards. Yeah. I forgot what they're called. And I hope you've played the game and you understood everything that I said, because <laughs> we're moving on to the rating portions of it, starting with Dwayne. <coughs> Please edit that out. I will. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was disgusting. That was impressive. Uh. Hey, children are watching this channel now. So there's one ch one child I know of that is watching this. This oh, I should stop swearing. Corrupt the youth. This game, you're a lady. You should stop swearing anyway. Was in the 
was in the early days of the me Sebastian Kenzie uh, gaming days. You've played this more than once with us, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. that's what he's saying. But the no. first time we played it, it was very early. I think it was like the second time I've been here. We played it, and um, they they said, "Do you want to play Ano?" I was like, "I don't know what that is. I didn't even know about the video game." Um, <laughs> but I saw the box, and then they pulled it out, and then they started <laughs> explaining it, and I was like, "I'm gonna fucking hate this game." Oh my god! But then we played it, and I was like, "Wow, I actually like that. That was cool." I played again. That was that was fun. The the one of the things that I really like about it and i know there's another game that does it and i cannot think about it or cannot think of it um where you don't have like resources you are generating resources like you don't have i don't have like physical wood tokens or anything generate them at the time you need them. exactly yeah which i really like because it's like yes i have to have the workers to make it but like I don't need to go somewhere to produce and hold on to them. And hold them exactly. Um and being able to like upgrade and grab new tiles and just replace them. I can't remember. Can you have the same like uh can you take the same? Yeah. The same you tile? can't take two of the same, no. Okay. Uh but either way. Being able to just kind of like Build your board. Your unique board. Yeah, the way that you want it. Yeah. Because of what you're trying to go for. It's cool. Oh, with that, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's it has cool. been it has been a little minute since we played this. So <laughs> we've mostly played it going. so many times that I could, yeah, I don't think I could forget this game. Times. Um I just know that. I've played it three times. It's not pretty. I've played it three so, times now. It is not a pretty game. In Dwayne's mind, <laughs> it's just not there. And the last the last time I played it, I did fairly good. The first two times, I was like, God damn. <laughs> this, oh, I'm doing bad. It takes a minute to catch on because like, you have to be able to build your resources up to play your cards. You also have to plan because a lot of the buildings rely on each other. Mm-hmm. So sorry, you have to pick a path. Of, okay, I'm going to make sure I get this resource so I can generate it for that thing in the future that my card wants. You have to build your buildings up to play your cards. She said it so beautifully (laughs) and eloquently. (laughs) I hope you forgot about me saying it. I give it a... Oh, go to my reading. (laughs) I give it a seven. It was fun. It surprised me, is what I should say. For an ugly game. I wouldn't say it's... Uh, there's a lot of games that look worse than this. It's not pretty. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's your standard industrial fucking... You don't yeah. play this game for the theme. Looking game. Five different colors no, the of The theme cubes. is good. It, it's, it's brighter than brass. The theme is the theme is good. <laughs> the true. art may not be great, or the, but the art. theme you're right, you're is right, really you're right, good. You're right, you're right. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. But yeah. Seven. I mean, it was fun. I liked it. It surprised me. I wouldn't... If if y'all ever said, let's play auto, I wouldn't be like no, no. Not really excited though, so maybe we keep we stay away from this one with with him. Okay. Yeah. Something for the future to work <laughs> down. Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys out there, Next. don't ever. That's ask, my rating. Don't ever ask. Do you want to play auto eighteen hundred? I mean, you? seven is really low for him too. So. That is. Yeah. No. No, it's not. So he's on your scale where seven's pretty good. Yeah. So I was introduced <laughs> to this game. <laughs> Uh, by uh, Carly, uh, who had uh, her her little cult fandom. Uh, the number how many I don't remember how many people Carly of Narlius of Narlius Carlion Gaming. Yes, yes. She uh, how many people has she gotten to? Oh, almost two hundred now. I think. Yeah, we're one of them. Yes, we bought this without ever playing hey, it mm-hmm. because we're she two recommended of them. it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we're two of them. I had seen the game. Obviously, the the like her talking about it and all the people that had fallen in love with the game because of her recommendation and obviously the the quality of the game itself. So when I first started hanging out with you guys and you had it, it was like, oh yeah, of course, I'd love to try it. Uh, the first playthrough was fun; so I really enjoyed it, and it was it was on one of the um, online 
sales or whatever, and I picked it up. So I do enjoy it. I'm glad I own it. Um, the only thing I think I really have to say is that I still don't know how to win. Um, I've only played it the two times, mind you, and I think it's going to take a few more to really kind of be like, all right, hey, this is how you can actually get to being more competitive um, as far as winning. Um, so there is a bit of a like a broad strategy curve that I think is a bit difficult to overcome. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means you know you have to you have to tackle it time and time again. And the thing is, is it, it is enjoyable enough that even if you play it and you don't do well, you're like, all right, cool. Um, hopefully, you know, your mechanism works well enough. You get things built to a certain point. You're like, okay, I still enjoyed this. Maybe it didn't work the way I wanted it to. But um, the process of trying to figure that out is its own interesting puzzle, uh, which which can be fun. So even if you're playing with players who just whomp you, um, it's not the end of the world. Um, and I'm... Personally, I look forward to, to playing it more to learn how to get better at the actual strategy. Um, yeah, everyone said it's not a very pretty game. Um, probably one of the only things I don't love is the randomness of the specific, the special resources, like the, the coca beans and the tobacco and whatnot. And the new so world. there's a handful of resources that you have to go to, like the New World space and you draw these tiles blank, and you don't know what's going to be on them. And there are there are three of them. There are three different of the resources on there, um, but you just don't know what you're going to get. And in a game where everything else is clear and open knowledge, pure information for you to plan against, it's really frustrating to be like, oh, I didn't get what I needed, right? And if no one else gets that resource, again... You can't, you can't acquire a resource that nobody has. Or you force yourself to spend more resources and turn economy to make that random draw again. Correct. So that is probably the only thing that's frustrating in a game that has a lot of other very strategic choices, right? Everything is, is the information's all there. You, of course, you don't know what other players are going to do, and that impacts things, certainly. But you have a general sense of, of how things are going to go. And that being like that one piece where you're like, wow. You know, I don't know. Don't know how that's going to go. It's a bit I, frustrating. I will say if you play the game more times, there are ways to combat that because there are cards that give you base re or not the base resources. I'm sorry. The, um, the raw world. resources. Mm -hmm. And still a random draw. Random draw. Yes, but you have no control over that. There is a whole action that allows you to go through the cards. So if that is something that you're actually like really trying to go for, that is an action that you can do on your turn to be able to put cards under and redraw different cards. So that is something that you can do. Again, yes, it it's, is in it's the action economy. Annoying, the action economy is, is tight, right? It is. So in a game where the action economy is that tight, and you introduce a single luck mechanism into it. I want to say it's not the only one because the cards, of course, are luck luck of the draw, like what you get for the whatnot. So like th there is other luck. But again, for some reason, I'm just far more OK with like card luck draw. I, I don't know why I'm OK with that. But there I am. is very little luck. I just think it's, it's like not so a lot. Card luck draw is like just par so part of board gaming. I don't have the agency. I'm not the one who's unlucky. It's the deck that's unlucky where dice. I'm the one who's unlucky. I don't know. That's how my brain works. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that. Tight, tight, tight action economy, very small piece of it all of a sudden becomes this thing that could be inhibiting. Because if you're like, all right, cool, of the initial cards I drew, one of the things I'm going to have to work towards needs this thing. Well, this thing needs this, and this thing needs this special resource. I have to get it. I have to work towards it. So that's really it. I mean, again, that's a minor, minor complaint. It's not a huge, huge issue. Uh, so for me overall, it's an 8.5. Okay. Now, okay. on to my review of this game. And probably my favorite thing about this game is that the starting state of the game every time is the same. The one thing that changes is the random starting hand of cards that you get that will essentially dictate your entire strategy. Because your starting strategy, while you can pip it off of it, I have not found myself really willing to do that 
in the start in, I mean the six cards you start with five cards you start with for end game goals or that kind of stuff changes every game objectives do change every game they are different which will dictate how your game goes as well yes but the biggest factor of you even being able to work towards that stuff is you being able to go off of your cards get a bunch of points at the end of the game by actually getting your cards but otherwise i like the mechanic like Dwayne had mentioned where when you you generate the resources when you need them and you don't have to hold on to 17 cubes of different colors to do the things you just have to generate the resources on the turn i send my my i forgot what they're called my farmer to the pig thing to generate pig i send my businessman to the hat farm to generate hat i don't know <laughs> i forgot what the resources are on the board specifically but it's essentially that right I don't know. There's something about this game that it's it's a, it's plays very simply, in my opinion. But there's a lot of strategy and dealing with the cards that you get and the cards that you're drawing. I do. That is probably my one gripe as well. Even though I like the luck aspect of the cards, I like that it forces you to do to yeah, play a different game every time. That the New World Islands. It's random and not in a way that like, oh, well, that forces you to play a different game every time. Not really, because you need that stuff. It's just getting unlucky and not getting the specific thing that you need sucks. And then someone else gets it and you have to spend, you have to spend resources, more resources to go there again and do the random draw again. Or you're spending resources to trade with someone else who has that, who's created an item based off of one of those because... I almost forgot. You cannot... Every resource in the game that a player has on their board, you can trade for. For some amount of trade re, trade resources, trade tokens is what they're called. Every resource on any player's board, you can spend some amount of trade tokens to attain, to generate in a round. That gives them gold. So you're giving the player something so that you can use one of their stuff. Cool cannot do that with the new world items so even if kenzie draws the tile that has the thing that i need i can't even use her tile to generate the resource there i have to wait for her to use that resource to generate a specific tile that uses that and that really only helps if that's what i was working towards so that's my one gripe um it can be big it hasn't really affected me i've won this game a couple times i've lost a lot of times but overall, I enjoy the game. It plays really quick, in my opinion. Like I said, in two players, we can we can bust this game out in like 40, 45 minutes to an hour. And it says here it's like a two-hour game. But I like the game. Overall, I probably rate it like eight and a half. I'm one that I do enjoy great presentation and great theme, which this doesn't have. So that does take points away from me. But otherwise, the I love theme the is good. The theme is good. The art's terrible. The art and the presentation. Like the cubes, make them a shape. You know, the businessman can be hats. The purple ladies, I forgot what they're called. That would actually be a really cool upgrade for this game. Yeah. The, the farmers can be pickaxes or, or shovels. I don't know. Hoes. Sure. My Simple, turn? right? But that's my rating. That's yeah. my turn? Yeah. My turn? Maybe a shovel. I really enjoy this game. This is a planning game. It is all, not all strategy, but for the most part, strategy. On the back of the game, it's got a rating of one through five of strategy, luck, and I don't know. The other, the other two don't matter. The other, but the strategy just, and luck, uh, it's got a five marketing. strategy and a one luck, and I was like, yes. Immediately, yes. Um, you're planning from the very beginning. Like You have cards in your hand that you're trying to get rid of, and you just have to plan all the way through. What what resources are the same? What resources do I need to get to make sure I can play these cards? And that just what I, that's what I love in a game is planning from the very beginning. Um, another thing that I really enjoy about this game is you don't really know who's winning throughout. So it's not like you're looking at someone's stack over here and you're like, oh, they've, they've got it in the bag. Like they're definitely winning. Um, there are some indicators that other people are doing really well. Um, but just because someone runs out of cards first does not mean they're winning. Yeah. The, the person who triggers the end game. Um, and then um, I really enjoy the resource aspect. There's also a ship aspect that no one has really talked about. 
Um, that's how you generate trade tokens. Um, okay. And that actually has a huge part to do with the game is trade tokens. And I can't remember the name of the Expedition other resource. Tokens. Expedition tokens. And that's how you're able to go to the new world and how you're able to expand on your board to be able to get more resources um, is by the expedition tokens. And that's the ships. The ships is how you do that by building on your beaches. Um, and that's a huge part of the game as well. And that's not really a strategy that I usually go for. He usually goes for that one. I think I do it when there's an end game scoring for it, but it's not really something that I usually go for. A lot of cards usually give you trade tokens. So that's usually how I get them, but that's another aspect of the game. Um, and then there's another one that gives you a lot of, can give you a lot of points at the end, which I get really mad when people grind this part of it, but it scores for <laughs> the types of workers you have at the end of the game. Um, and it's very easy to spend expedition tokens to just draw three of them. And <laughs> he usually... And if you're lucky and you have the workers, that's like five guaranteed points Yeah. sometimes. Um, so it's easy when it's getting close to the end when people like have to play their cards for you to just sit there and grind expedition tokens and be like, okay, I'm spending two. Because there's no negative effects for having cards in your hands when someone else runs out. Um, one of my biggest gripes for the game though i forgot what i was gonna say i forgot but kenzie has forgotten her complaint and so if she will continue with the rest of her rating i'd probably give it an eight and a half too i don't think it would be a nine for me i was trying to like justify it being a nine in my head because i'm like I, I love this game i could play it like one after the other after the other after the other but i don't think it sits at a nine for me because i just have so many other games that i'm like i would i would play that one first I would play that one first. Okay. And that is Kenzie's this rating. This is an eight and a half. It's eight and a half, and that's Kenzie's review. There's something I wanted to say. And you will, might find that out later through the Instagram if you follow us there. Go ahead and do that now. Here's the thing. <laughs> Otherwise, thanks for joining us for this video. That'll do it for uh, this episode of Battle of the Games with Ano 1800, and you'll see us and this game again in the... I'm going to remember. In the rankings video at the end of the series. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye.